Welcome back. Let's talk about what takes a non-binding price ceiling to make it into a binding price ceiling. So we want to think about a non-binding price ceiling. So a non-binding price ceiling to a binding ceiling. All right, so what would cause this to happen? Well, let's start out by just setting up our supply and demand diagram and drawing in this non-binding price ceiling. So the th think about our diagram. We've got price versus quantity. We'll put in our upward sloping supply curve, throw in a downward sloping demand curve, and let's label in our initial equilibrium price. So we'll call that P E zero. So our equilibrium price initially. And we'll throw in an initial uh, equilibrium quantity. So Q E zero. You could call them P E one or Q E one. Doesn't matter. Just want to put a number on it. So when we look at this thing later, we remember what was first and what was later. All right, so we've got a market that's cruising along. It's in equilibrium. Things are doing really well. So what should we look at as an example? Let's suppose that this is the market for ice, like bags of ice, right? So this is our market for ice. So market for ice. And I don't know, suppose that our initial equilibrium price is like $3 or something. So this is like uh, three bucks. And the government says, well, we want to make sure that the price of ice doesn't get out of control. So they put in a price ceiling on ice, a limit to the price of ice of like five dollars. Right, so suppose they put in a limit of five dollars and this is our price ceiling. So $5, the price can't rise above $5. So does this price ceiling matter? Well, sellers would love to sell at $5, but they can't, right? That's not the equilibrium price. So nobody really cares about this $5 because the market for ice says that the price is $3. Government says you can't charge more than five bucks. Everybody shrugs and just kind of keeps going on along about their business. But what happens if there's an event that shocks this market? So maybe a hurricane, for example. So for our event, uh, let's put it over here so we've got a little bit of space, right? So for our event, is a hurricane. So we've got our three-step process for this. So which step is affected? Well, if a hurricane comes along, knocks out power at people's houses, slow the comeback, often commercial centers have backup generators, etc. So this is going to be a story about the demand for ice. So this is a story about demand, and demand increases. Okay, so let's draw that in and see what happens. So suppose demand increases a lot. So now we've got a really strong demand for ice. So what does that do? Where is our new equilibrium? Well, if the market could work, that means that this price of ice would be driven up to something like I don't know, six dollars. Right, so this six dollars, we could call this P E two. So this is our equilibrium price for ice after the demand shift, when demand is at uh, D two. So our third step was draw it in and see what happens. But here's where the price ceiling starts to come into effect. Right, so the price rises to, what did we say, $5 as our limit and cannot rise anymore.
So the price rises the $5, goes up, it hits that price ceiling, and now that price ceiling is binding. So if our new equilibrium price is higher than the price ceiling, Right, so if our new equilibrium price is higher than the price ceiling, as we set it up and drew this shift for a hurricane shifting demand for ice, now that new equilibrium price is higher than the $5. We think it would be something like $6, right? So if the new equilibrium price is higher than the price ceiling, price cannot rise to the equilibrium. Okay, so what's the problem if price can't get to that equilibrium? Isn't that the whole point of the policy? The whole point of the policy is to keep prices from rising. Well, why don't we just limit all prices then? So let's look at what our issue is. So at this $5 price uh, that's imposed by the ceiling, right? Can't rise above that. So at that $5 price, how many do homes want to buy? What's our quantity demanded? So at $5 for a bag of ice, not only do I want to chill down the food that's in my freezer, but it'd be nice to chill my drinks and maybe have cold water to drink as well. Right? So households have a really high quantity demanded, a large quantity demanded. But what about sellers? So at that $5 price, we trace it over till it hits the supply curve. How many are they willing to supply? Well, we'll supply some, but we don't want to use all of our generator power to make ice if we could only sell it for $5. So we've got this quantity supplied that is less than quantity demanded. So our problem, when we have this binding price ceiling, is now we have a shortage. So if our new equilibrium price is higher than the price ceiling, Price cannot rise to the equilibrium. So what's our result from that? That means that a, a price that's effectively too low, quantity demanded, exceeds quantity supplied, and we end up with a shortage. So well-intentioned programs designed to keep prices from rising have the unintended consequence of they may keep markets from working and may keep us allocating from allocating our scarce resources to their highest and best use. Economics is a story of trade-offs. Policies like these leave us with a trade-off. Do we want to keep prices from rising and end up with shortages, or do we allow prices to rise and have more of the good like ice, but now it's more expensive. It's a tough decision. That's why this is fun to debate. Thank you, and we'll see you next time.